<laughs> Hallelujah. And not the kind of religion that tells you that if they don't believe like you do, kill them. Amen? Yeah, That's the reason they came over here was to get away from that kind of a religion. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. But when you open your doors yes. and your borders, <laughs> right. amen, to that kind of belief system, right. and you see things happen like happened on 9-11. Yes, amen? Sir. True. And there's some of the other things that we've seen since then. Right. Hallelujah. My, my, my. The terrorist bombings and things that have went on. Right. Hallelujah. You cannot... Getting the hog pen with the pigs without it doing some damage to you. Amen. Right. Without you, you can't sleep with the devil right. and think that it's not going to hurt you. Come on. The devil came to kill, to steal, yeah. and destroy. destroy. And that's what that religion does. Amen. Amen. Kills, steals, and destroys. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. We cannot... I was watching some video this week. We cannot join hands and have unity with that faith because there's too much of a difference between that faith and our faith. Right. Amen. True. They talk about getting together for the benefit of the community. Yeah. The community needs Jesus. Amen. Amen. Right. The community needs Jesus. Right. Your town needs Jesus. Come on. Your county needs Jesus. Right. Your state needs Jesus. Come on. Your nation needs Jesus. Yes. True. Not Allah. Amen. Amen. Whenever you agree that well, we'll just work together and we won't share Jesus with them, you're a fool. Right. Amen. True. Hallelujah. You've been fooled. Right. Because Jesus is what they need. Amen. Amen. True. If I put clothes on your back and fill your belly with food and I let you split hell wide open, what have I accomplished? Amen. Right. Jesus is their first need. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. We've been talking the last couple of weeks and hopefully well I don't know about hopefully I'm enjoying it myself hallelujah Amen. but we're going to try to get finished today hallelujah we've been talking about faith and not just faith but extreme faith I heard someone say one time that and they were talking about it negatively they said that blind faith was not a good thing well I decided I'd look up what the definition of what blind faith is blind faith means to Believe without understanding. That don't sound too bad to me. Amen? To believe in spite of the fact that you don't understand. That sounds a whole lot like biblical faith to me. Amen? Oh. To believe even though you don't understand it. You can't comprehend it. That's the kind of faith you have to have or you won't believe in God. Because you can't understand God. You cannot comprehend God. That's what we've been talking about. A couple of weeks ago we talked about getting at our wits end. Right. Coming to the place where we can't understand it. Right. Coming to the place where our wisdom just is not enough. We can't perceive it. We can't conceive it. Come on. We can't understand it. Amen? Come on. The sooner we get to the place to where we realize we can't understand God, then we can really begin to understand God. Because He is not understandable by the carnal mind. We cannot understand His ways. Amen? <laughs> And I've said, if I've said it once, I've said it 30 times since we've been preaching this sermon series. His ways are higher than our ways. Yes, sir. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Yes, I made this statement Tuesday night in the few minutes that I spoke that God intentionally made it to where you could not understand it. On purpose, He fixed it where you couldn't understand it. Right. And that's what we're going to look at today. He chose the foolish things to confound the wise. And He had a purpose for doing this. He has a reason for not wanting you to understand it all. Amen? He has a reason for that. We'll find out what that is here in a minute. We've been talking about faith, radical faith. We'll talk about, and we'll call it blind faith in, in, in fear of getting some emails and stuff from people out there, but we'll call it blind faith anyway. Faith that, does, that just doesn't believe because it happens. But faith that believes in spite of the fact that it didn't happen. Amen? Hallelujah. Come on. Faith that comes when we arrive at our wit's end. Come on. When our back is to the wall. When we're to the place where we say, I, can't, I don't have any other options. And sometimes God has to get us to that place or we have to, maybe we have to get to that place in order for us to really depend on God. Amen? Amen? There's no other way out 
Guess I'll trust you, Lord. There's no other options. Guess I'll trust you, Lord. Amen? True. He wants us to trust Him regardless. Amen. Whether there's other options or not. Whether our back is to the wall or not. Amen. He wants that kind of faith in Him. Right. I know He's able. I know He will. Yes. But even if He don't, Come on. I still believe. Amen. I still trust Him. Right. Even if it don't make sense, and it won't. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not logical, mm -hmm. and it's not most of the time. Oh. Amen. Even though it's improbable, I still believe God. Amen. Amen. We talked about how that the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 that we walk by faith and not by sight. We talked about how that four times in the Bible it says the just shall live by faith. So God's teaching us that we live by faith or we die. We walk by faith or we fall. Amen. Jesus said that with man it is impossible, with, but with God all things are possible. Amen. We talked about the law of faith. That's only mentioned one time and it's in Romans 3 and 27. And it mentions the law of faith. And we talked about how that, that law supersedes all the laws of this natural realm. We've talked about the law of physics. We've talked about the law of nature. We've talked about all the other things that none of those things bind God. God is not bound by logic. God is not bound by the laws of nature. God is not bound. Brother Slee said last Sunday morning as we were closing, Brother Slee said He's not bound by time. And I liked that. And that's true. I'm going to give you two instances in Scripture this morning where time means nothing to God. God can stop it. God can start it. Right. He does not operate. Into, that's why That's why we get, we get discouraged because we think, well, I prayed and it's been two days. It's been three days. It's been four days. It's yeah. been five. We, we, uh, work, we operate on a 24-hour clock right. and a calendar. Amen. God don't. Amen. He's not bound. He's not constrained by the limits of time. Amen. Amen. And He purposely made it to where we could not understand it for a purpose. Go with me this morning to 1 Corinthians, the right. first chapter. 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. We're going to read several scriptures there. And let's look at how God made it on purpose to where you couldn't understand it with your carnal mind. Amen? Come on. And He has a reason for that. And once we talk about it, once we look at these scriptures, once we make the statement, we'll realize why. He does not want us to understand why He made it this way, why He made it on purpose Amen. that we couldn't understand. 1 Corinthians 1 and 18 says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. You see, our carnal mind, we can't even understand it with our carnal mind how that a man could be born of a virgin, could live 33 and a half years of sinless life. None of that stuff's logical. That doesn't make any sense. That's not probable. And he could die on a cross and in three days walk out of the tomb and how that faith in that could save your soul. Our carnal mind can't understand that. That doesn't make any sense to us. Not if we just if, if we just have it in the carnal realm of thinking. So even the preaching of the cross itself, that message chosen by God to be the way, the only way, is foolish to man's thoughts. It's foolishness. Amen? As far as our carnal mind goes. He says in verse 19, For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Did you hear what he said? I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. Amen? God is wiser than you are. I don't care if you're a professor. I don't care if you're the dean of the college. I don't care if you've got a Ph.D. and a D.D.D. and all these things. God is smarter than you. Amen. In this life, sometimes people equate worthiness with knowledge. They think that, well, I know more, so I'm better. Amen. But none of us, I don't care how smart you are, when you compare our brains to His brains, none of us are very smart. Amen. As a matter of fact, sometimes education hurts instead of helps. Right. I've seen people who had faith
faith in God and they believed the Bible right. till they went to school. Amen. Till they went to seminary. Now that's a sad state right there. Amen. Amen. It's not just the secular schools anymore. Now we've got seminaries that are teaching uh, preachers that are, that are preachers going to be preachers teaching them that the Bible not all of it is literal. Not all of it happens. Some of it is allegorical. Some of it are just examples. One of the most popular TV personalities, preachers, I tell you his name, Pat Robertson. Y'all know who I'm talking about. 700 Club. He said that we as Christians need to stop taking everything in this book literal because it makes us look foolish. <clears throat> foolish on whose compared to whose knowledge right. is what I would like to ask you. Foolish compared in whose opinion? Yeah. Amen? Come on. The things of this book are foolish if you try and explain them with a the carnal mind. Some of them are foolish. The Bible says the foolishness of God is wiser than man. Amen? Amen. The things that God has chosen. Yes. He could have found another way to bring Jonah to his knees, but He chooses to prepare a great fish right. to swallow him up. Come on. Amen? He chose that. Right. Brother Billy, it's hard to believe. I know it is. He made it that way. Amen. He made it that way. Absolutely. It's hard to believe that, that everything we see that this earth, the solar system, the sun, the moon, right. the light, the darkness, the oceans, the earth, it's hard to understand how all of that could be created in six days. I know it is. He made it that way. Come on. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. He made it to where we had to have faith. Absolutely. Amen? True. You have to have faith to believe these things. Exactly. Because you can't explain them with your education. Amen. You can't explain them with your wisdom. That's why He said that He would destroy the wisdom of the wise. Right. Because wisdom says... Hmm, this had to happen and that had to happen and these things. Now that makes sense. That fits. That makes sense to my carnal mind. But he destroys the wisdom of man by doing things that does not make sense to Brother David Fitchers. Alright. Amen. Come on. He destroys the wisdom of man with the things that he the way he chooses to work. Yes, it says sir. that he bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Listen to what he says in verse 20. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath, God, hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? As your professor, as your science teacher stands there and with his charts shows you how that man came from a monkey, that's worldly wisdom. But through eyes of faith, you see just how stupid that is. Amen? He destroys the wisdom of this world. He's made foolish the wisdom of this world. Come on. He made foolish the wisdom of the world. These men that are so smart, these men that have all of this education, and they come away thinking, we all came from monkeys. How stupid is that? He has... May foolish the wisdom of this world. He's not bound by logic. He's not bound by nature. He's not bound, like Brother Slee said, by the law of time. You don't have to go there, but I'm going to read you three verses in the book of Joshua. Joshua 10 and 12, Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites, because we're not through in 1 Corinthians yet, so don't leave that, of the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son... Stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of the heavens, and hasted not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord hearken unto the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. Now, here in the book of Joshua, God causes the sun to stand still. Talk to your college professor about that. 
For a whole day, everything stops as far as the rotation goes. Amen? The sun doesn't move. The moon doesn't move. We're ta you're talking about Almighty God. Amen? What God are you talking about? The one that can speak to the sun. Stand still and it stands still. Amen? The one that can speak to the earth as it rotates on its axis and says, don't move. Stay right there. And it has to obey. So you see, time doesn't affect God. In the book of Isaiah, the Lord turns back the sundial 10 degrees for Hezekiah. Time went backwards. <laughs> Amen. 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 Time went backwards. The sun doesn't move when our God commands it not to move. But Brother Billy, that's not logical. It doesn't make any sense. It has to or everything will fall out of its place and we'll go plunging. No, 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 no. God is not bound by all of that. If you, if you are on the moon and you look back at the earth, you don't see anything holding the earth in place. But the Bible says that it, it's held up, it, that it's founded upon His Word. That His Word holds it in place. He stops the sun. He stops the normal rotation. Things that scientists say is impossible to happen but we know that with our God all things are possible amen and he causes the sundial to go backwards all things are possible he's not bound by time not bound by logic not bound by reason back in first Corinthians the first chapter 21st verse for after that in the wisdom of God the world by wisdom knew not God it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Now look at that. The world by wisdom knew not God. He's talking about carnal wisdom. He's talking about carnal knowledge. You cannot come to God by wisdom. You cannot come to God with your own carnal mind because it takes faith to believe that He is. It takes faith to come to God. You cannot come to God by wisdom. As a matter of fact, worldly wisdom, if you rely on that, will take you farther away from God instead of closer. Mm -hmm. That's why a while ago whenever I said we have young men and young women that believe in God and they believe in the Bible until they go to college. Mm -hmm. When they go to college, their professors begin to call into question the things of God. Why? Because the things of God do not line up with the wisdom of man. But they don't have to. Amen? Amen? The things of God, you don't have to be able to explain how that in six days He created it. You don't have to be able to explain how that Lazarus is dead four days and then comes out of the tomb. I had a young man, I'm not going to mention his name, but I had a young man a few years back now send me an email. And I knew him from a few years before. And I knew his faith from a few years before. And I knew that how he believed the Word, how he had faith, didn't see faith like that in a lot of young people that he had. But he was now, when I got the email, he was in college now. And his professors, he had been listening to his professors. And he'd been look, he had been looking at things logically. And he had been trying to weigh out how these things could happen with man's wisdom. And he was beginning to question his own faith in God because of the wisdom of man. And you will do that if you expect the wisdom of man to be able to figure out this book. This book must be approached with faith. Amen. This book must be believed by faith. The laws of nature and all the things that, 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 that work here in this natural realm, the law of faith supersedes all of that. Come on, I told you Tuesday night, science is okay until it goes against this book. Right. When your science says something other than this, what this book says, when it goes against this book, guess who's wrong? Not this book. Your science is wrong. But you don't understand. We figured it down right to the very molecule. Yeah, with man's wisdom. Man's wisdom is limited. Man's knowledge is limited. God's ways, God's thoughts, God's mind, God's, God's understanding, God's wisdom is above all of our wisdom. Amen? All of our thoughts. All of our ways. So when you think you've got it figured out, you don't. Amen. You can't. Because God, 
the Bible says, has made the, made, made the uh, wisdom of the world, he has turned it to naught. And the world by wisdom knew not God. Amen. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified under the Jews' stumbling block and under the Greeks' foolishness. See, the Greeks, they were all about, they had to know. Amen? They got to know. True. They have to have that knowledge. They have to figure things out. Right. But under them that which were called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God Amen. and the wisdom of, of God. Verse 25, 1 Corinthians, the first chapter is still there. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. The Bible talks about knowledge or wisdom puffing up. And that's what it does. Worldly knowledge worldly wisdom education I'm not saying that God frowns on education because he don't but he frowns on education that take that causes you to question your faith in him <laughs> that causes you to stray farther away from him and the belief in this book Amen. I don't care what science book you're using if it goes contrary to this book the Word of God it's wrong yeah. I don't care how many smart men have tried to figure it out I told you before they talk about the age of the earth and they'll say, well, because this layer means this many years. And this layer means this many years. And this, who says? God didn't say. Man's wisdom says that. Amen? You have no idea whether you're right or not. I ain't saying they're wrong about everything. They're wrong about a lot of it. Amen? They're wrong about a lot of it. But I'm not saying you're wrong about everything. Some of the things I'm sure you do understand. But when you get to the place to where that in order for you to make it make sense, then you have to stray from the Word of God and say, well, this is how it happened and the Bible's wrong. You've done lost your way. Because God's Word is infallible. Your science book is not. Amen. Amen. The foolishness of God is wiser than that of man. His ways above our ways. His thoughts above our thoughts. Then he says in verse 27, God hath chosen. Now listen, he did this on purpose. He hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Mm -hmm. On purpose, God chose the foolish things. On purpose, he chose a whale to swallow Jonah. But really, really, that's hard to believe. I know it is. He did that on purpose. Right. By faith, God chose an ark to save Noah and his family and the animals whenever he brought the great flood upon the earth. Brother Billy, that's hard for my carnal mind to understand. I know it. He made it that way. The reason God on purpose made it to where we cannot understand it with our carnal mind and comprehend it. you know why? Because when man believes he understands it, man believes he, does not lo he no longer needs God. Right. When man believes that he has got it figured out, Man ceases to believe that he needs God. Oh. Amen? And he himself begins to think that he is a God. Mm -hmm. And that he is deity. Mm -hmm. Or that he is the supreme creation. Amen? However you want to word it. He, whenever he begins to believe that he knows it all, he begins to believe he does not need God. Amen. That's why knowledge is so... Worldly knowledge is dangerous to a certain extent. Amen? All right. The law of faith... Just as the laws that we deal with in this realm are tangible and understandable to man, so the law of faith is in the spirit realm. But it is only understandable by faith. It is only understandable by spirit. He chose the foolish things. Because, and He made these things the way they are to where you could not understand it all. Because when man does understand, when he thinks he's got it figured out, he feels that he no longer needs God. Proverbs, the third chapter, says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct thy paths. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding or your own knowledge. Your own knowledge. You can't figure God out. He's not understandable to your mind. He's above us. He is greater than we are. He is all-knowing. 
Exactly. We can't understand things. We, we've got to see a beginning. We've got to see a start. We've got to see a finish. Right. We've got to figure out how everything came into being. In order for us to understand things like this watch that I have on my arm, we have to be able to look inside of it and see how the, the things turn, see how the, the, the battery works and, and all of that. God's not like that. You cannot take God and dissect Him like a frog and know how He works. Amen. He's above us. True. He's smarter than us. True. That's why when we get to this place where we understand that He's not bound by logic, He's not bound by time, He's not bound by the laws that work in this natural realm, then we can say, okay, God, I don't understand it, but I believe You. I don't understand it, but I trust You. Like the man when they came and said, don't bother me no anymore. Your daughter's dead. Jesus turned to him and said, just believe. Yeah. Just believe. Mm -hmm. You see, the only way you're going to make it today is to just believe. Mm -hmm. Don't spend your, don't waste your time trying to figure it out with your carnal mind. Just believe. Don't waste your time trying to figure out how all those animals got on that boat. Just believe because God's Word says it. Don't spend your time trying to figure out how old the earth is or how many days it actually took them or if a day is a thousand years, a thousand years is a day or whatever. Don't spend your time trying to figure that out because He did it. Just believe it. Amen. He did it. Just believe it. Right. He made it plain and simple. He said the evening and the morning were the first day. Yeah. Then on day two, He creates things and He says in the evening and the morning were the second day. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. There is no figuring that out. Amen. That's how God works. True. You can't explain how the little woman's barrel that was empty supplied them with food every day of the famine. Amen. You can't explain how the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea on dry ground. You can't understand how the great walls of Jericho fell down flat and Joshua and the children of Israel went in and took the city. You can't understand that. Just believe. Amen. Just believe. Oh, the Bible says Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. True. There's where your righteousness comes from today. Belief in Him. Oh, Only believe. Oh. Trust in Him. Oh. Trust in Him. He purposely made it where you could not understand it. Just believe. Wow. Just believe. God set it up where you have to have faith. Yeah. You have to have yeah. faith. And you'll never have faith if you can figure it all out. You won't need it. You won't need it. If you can figure it all out, you will not ever have to have... You won't see the need to have faith. First Corinthians one twenty eight says, "In the base things of the world, the things which are despised, hath God chosen. Yea, of the things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in His presence." You can't stand before God and say, "I got here because of my wisdom." I told you this before. When you get to heaven and you talk to Abraham and Elijah and Isaiah and all the others, and you say, "How did you get here?" Same way you did. Faith. Faith. Every man that's ever went to heaven got there one way. When Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, He didn't say, I'm the new way. I'm the new truth. I'm the new life. No, He always had been. He always had been the way. He always had. We talked about that. Always. All of those on the other side of the cross, yes. looking forth in faith to that which was coming. Amen. He had always been the way. Amen. He didn't say, I'm a new way. He's the way. Always been. Always will. That's the only way you're going to get there. You're going to get there by faith. And no other, no other way. Amen. Only by faith. Hebrews 11 and 1. I'm closing. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. That should sound familiar to you. Amen. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. Did you hear that? You can only understand that through faith. Otherwise, you're going to try to figure out that there was a mass of gas <laughs> or something. Yeah. And there was an explosion. There was a big bang. big bang. There was some life. There was something squirmy that crawled out of some water. Finally sprouted some legs. Started climbing trees. Sooner or later, it started, you know, it started walking up on its two feet. Yeah. It was a monkey. Then later on, it became a man. Yeah. Amen. 
No, that's true. All that, boy, that sounds dumber than a box of rocks right there. <laughs> Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. Right. So that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. He said it. If you go on and read the rest of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to Him must believe that He is and that He is a reward of them that diligently seek Him. And you'll find places in this chapter where it says, By faith, Abraham. By faith, Abel. By faith, Enoch. By faith, Noah. By faith, Sarah. By faith, Isaac, Jacob, Joshua, Joseph, Moses, Rahab. And then finally the Apostle Paul says that I don't have enough time to mention them all. By faith, all of these obtained. All of these made it by faith. Right. If you make it, you'll make it the same way Abraham did, by yeah, faith. True. Not being able to see it, not being able to touch it, not being able to feel it, just believe. Amen. Just believe. Amen. 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 All of these people had something in common. Faith. Yeah. Faith in God. Go back and look at all of the great miracles. There was one thing. There were different people, different circumstances, but there was one thing that they all had in common. Faith. Faith. They all made it. By faith. All right. The only way you'll make it today Amen. is by faith. True. And not being able to understand it, but believing that He is. As I was studying this, I thought about Job. And how that the Lord said this to Job. He said, who is, who is this that darkened counsel by words without knowledge? He tells Job to gird up his self like a man. Then as he walks out and God begins to speak to him, he begins to ask him questions like this. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare it if thou have understanding. You hear that? Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare it if thou hast understanding. Explain it to me. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. God says, explain it to me, know it all. Yeah. Amen. Oh, can you imagine if he had a little one-on-one -on -one with some of, like Einstein, mm. some of these smart men of the world? Yeah. Where was you at when I created the earth? Right. Explain it to me. Hmm. Tell me how I did that. Yeah. Tell me how I did that. Oh, I like that. Amen. Isn't he a wonderful Lord? Isn't he a, isn't he a wonderful God this morning? Amen. Where was that when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare it if you have understanding. You think you know more than I do? Who hath laid the measures thereof? If thou knowest, tell me what the measurements are. Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who hath laid the cornerstone thereof? Explain it to me. Finally, God continues to talk to him like this. You, you need to read Job the, the 38th and 39th and 40th and 41st chapter. When you get to the 42nd chapter, the Bible says, Job answered the Lord and said this, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be hidden from thee, withholding from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me which I knew not. That sums this whole thing that we've been talking about in a nutshell. Things that I don't understand. Things that are too wonderful for me. Things that I don't know. You know. Hard for man to confess he don't know it all. I know some people it's impossible for them to, for them to admit they don't know everything. But you don't. Amen. I don't. Amen. He does. Right. He's given us His Word True. to lead us and to guide us. Right. To reveal to us Him. And in order, for us to, in order for Him to be revealed to us, it must be revealed to us by faith because we can't understand it. Absolutely. We can't under, we got a lot of smart preachers who try. True. They think they have all the answers. They think they know it all. Right. The Apostle Paul said it best. He said, now we look through a glass darkly. All right. One day we'll know. Come on. One day we'll know. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Faith. 
Faith that believes God regardless of the circumstance and regardless of what you're facing. Right. Regardless of what man says, what science says, or what wisdom says, faith that God is God. Trust Him. Amen. Believe in Him. Now listen to me. You're going to need it before you get out of here. Right. Desperate times calls for desperate faith. Yes, sir. Amen. True. We're going to have to take it. Take Him at His word. Absolutely. Just believe. Just believe that He is and that He will do what He said He would do. Someone else this morning have something before we go.